Here we are, I'm getting ready to do Mocha Girls One's hair in small box braids. Right now it's in the cornrow twist hawk style that she's been wearing for several weeks. We washed her hair and last night put it in these big cornrows to keep it stretched out so that her box braids will be somewhat long and stretched to their fullest capacity. I wanted to show you the, pro the tools that I'll be using to box braid her hair. In her hand, she's got, she's going to turn around and in her hand, she's got two different uh, rat tail combs. One is completely made of plastic and um, that's what I was using before. But I've discovered the other rat tail comb that has a metal tip. I get much crisper and cleaner parts with that one. So typically when I do twist and bog braids I don't worry that much about making straight parts but because this is for her recital I kinda want the style to look really perfect and crisp. I will be using the metal tip rat tail comb to make the parts. I'll also be using castor oil to help me when I'm taking the braids down in case her hair is a little bit dry I don't want to wet her hair a lot because I I don't want it to shrink back up but I will spritz it spritz it just to dampen it a little bit and then I'll slather on the castor oil to to help me take the braids down without causing knots and breakage to her hair which has been twisted for a long time I'll also be using shea butter my shea butter mix that's, the, that's what I'll be using on the strands themselves for um, to lock in the moisture. And here is my spritz bottle of plain water. When If things get sticky, <laughs> I'll spritz first to try to avoid the tangles. So let's get started. All right, here we are. Uh, I've gotten a little, little ways with the box braids. As you can see, um, the box braids are one on top of the other. I don't recommend this, especially if you're working with someone whose hair isn't very thick. Mocha Girl 1, to me, has enough hair for several people on her head, so I'm not really that worried about making it look thick. Her hair is going to look thick no matter what I do by the time I'm done. But right about here, I want to start worrying about positioning the braid so that her parts don't show this glaringly. So I'm going to do what's called a brick layers pattern. That means instead of having the braids in a row like this, I'm going to alternate where the braids sit so that instead of having a part here, there would be a braid here. So I'm going to do that here. You see how these two braids are side by side? To get the brick layer look, I'm going to make my part, I won't make my part over here. I'm going to make my part slightly to the left so that if I pull it apart, it'll be centered right in the middle of a braid. What that's going to do is when I'm, when I'm done with the braid, and in order to do this, um, I may have more hair on one side than the other, but I'm willing to do that just to start the brick layer design. What that's going to do is when I'm done with the braid, the braid is going to lie across this part right here and hide it. So here we go. Again, I'm, I'm not braiding over. I'm braiding under so that the braid has ha, will have movement when I'm done. So that when she wants to do different styles, the braid will move well in all directions. See that? That this braid will take care of that part. Hold on. Try to keep the stitch firm. All right, here 
is the braid that we have that will now, as you can see, it lies in, along the part that's under here and covers it up. But for but I recommend doing a brick layers part right from the beginning. I didn't do it because I was just taking a shortcut because I know that how she normally wears her hair it won't matter in the long run. But I think you have more versatility with the brick layers pattern. So I would start it right from the beginning. I would do the same process of making sure that there's a braid that, that lies over each vertical part. I just wanted to point out that one thing I like to do when I do these box braids is I like to add a, a few pretty touches to the parting. For the most part I've done square parts, rectangles, um, and um, squares, but right at the top where it's going to probably be visible when she bends her head, I've put in a few triangles in different orientations so that when she bends her head you can see a pretty triangle here and there. I think that type of detail adds something special to the box braids. Thanks. Here is the finish style. I'm going to move around her head. Now it appears that all of her hair are in these teeny tiny braids but in fact I have take, made some of the braids underneath slightly bigger there's not a huge amount of difference in size between the bigger braids and the smaller braids but when it's time for me to take down the style I'm going to really appreciate the bigger braids and the smaller braids just give the illusion that all her hair is braided up in tiny braids and I did a nice curvy center part which will look really lovely in her bun here is the ponytail. She'll be having she'll be wearing a hat on top of this ponytail. From a distance, you can't even you won't even be able to tell from the stage that her hair isn't loose. And it's a nice size pony length ponytail. Okay? Here is the bun. I didn't really take the time to pin it and secure it perfectly as I will for the actual performance. She'll be wearing a crown. The crown will be up here. Look up for me. And that'll be the bun. And I'll arrange the braids so that they're perfect. This is the part. Okay, and there you have it. And I may do the bun a little bit higher. I'll probably do it a little bit higher. So stay tuned on uh, CherishMyDaughter.com when she's actually dressed in costume and everything. I will post pictures of the final style. But I think this will work well for us. Be blessed. <laughs>